Okay, so like I said, uh, this is uh, the Blackboard Interactive Rubrics Workshop hosted by CIDL. Uh, my name is Kevin Harris. I'm the Instructional Support Coordinator here at CIDL. Um, I, my phone number and email are attached if you have questions um, about rubrics or really anything related to um, tech, integ tech integration or Blackboard support, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And I'm happy to help uh, where I can. Uh, so there's only three of us. So if you wanna type this in the chat, you can, or you can unmute uh, and, and speak if you'd like. But uh, just curious to what your um, experience is or has been with um, rubrics in ultra specifically. I guess I can, I'm Michelle Kochka. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can, Michelle, thank okay, you. Okay, sorry, I couldn't figure out, I didn't hit my last name uh, initially, I forgot to do it. Uh, for rubrics, I guess I just need to know like more, I try to use them, but then like, I think I'm number two. You know what I mean? I try, but I get lost. <laughs> so okay. that's where- that's, Yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Great, so uh, we'll definitely be able to help you out, I think. Um, because there are some quirks uh, with Blackboard and they've made quite a few changes to the rubrics um, and they, they still have some updates to come that hopefully will will benefit um, you know the instructors when they're trying to actually insert them in their courses and uh, kind of use them effectively. Uh, just um, if, if you don't know, CIDL has a, a website that has um, many resources related to in this case, specifically Blackboard, um, but we also have other teaching and learning resources on the site as well. Um, and so feel free to check it out if you have not. Uh, and then today's agenda, um, we're going to, I'm gonna share a couple of resources related to rubrics. I'm gonna start with an example um, of a rubric, uh, of an assignment uh, with the rubric attached and, and kind of how that works. We'll go over the limitations that currently exist with rubrics, some of which um, hopefully are going to be um, removed by Blackboard uh, in the very near future. We'll talk about how to copy rubrics um, from one course to another, how to create new rubrics, how to add rows and columns, attaching a rubric to a course, and then how to remove, a, I'm sorry, attaching a rubric to an assignment, and then how to remove rubrics. I don't think this will take us the full hour. Um, so at the end, if you would like time to kind of work on your own rubrics while I'm on the line to help, I'm happy to do that. Um, or if you have questions or kind of concerns, we can take those as well. That's uh, jumping ahead of myself here. Um, so here it is. So next Thursday, the 22nd, uh, is the workshop that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, it, this workshop is more on kind of developing and using rubrics, um, the, maybe the reasons why and the how maybe outside of Blackboard. So like I said, this workshop today is really just using rubrics in Blackboard. Um, but but CIDL hosts a number of workshops every month. Um, feel free to check them out uh, and sign up for as many as you'd like. Uh, so I've, I've structured uh, today's workshop. And if I cut out, by the way, because I just bumped the thing that causes me to cut out. Um, if, if my microphone cuts out and it turns into like robot sounds, please unmute and tell me and don't let me just <laughs> kind of keep rambling on. Uh, and then I'll just unplug it and plug it back in. It takes. I don't know, 20 seconds or so, and then I'll be right back. Um, but for today's workshop, I've structured it in the form of a um, of a Blackboard course, and then we'll just kind of work through um, uh, kind of the different parts of the agenda. Uh, so first of all, for resources, um, I just showed the um, the page, but I'm going to paste these into the chat. Um, they're related to the CIDL uh, site. Uh, through NIU. This one that I'm posting now is specifically related to rubrics uh, in Blackboard. And this third one is the um, the other rubrics workshop. Uh, that's next week. So there's some extra resources that hopefully uh, will be helpful. Um, so then to really get started though, I think we should jump into uh, if you haven't used rubrics in Blackboard before, this is an example of what they might look like uh, and how you might use them. Um, so to use one, if you just go into um, your course and you have an assignment and you have the rubric already attached, 
you can go to submissions and then you can click on a student. Um, and then here I have a student's submission. And now to use the rubric, I just go over here to the right hand side of the screen and I can click um, either uh, this image right here or I can click this little gray pop out. And this is going to show me the rubric. And up until recently, this is really the only view you could get. So you could, you could grade here um, and then you could just click uh, within the rubric. Now, um, as of, I don't remember if it was last month or the month before, you can now actually see the descriptors. Um, and so you can click this little um, slider right here that says show descriptions. And now I can see what um, those actually mean in my rubric. So I've graded this rubric, I'm sorry, I've graded this paper, um, which was written by AI. Um, and then I can just select the scores that I want. I can add a uh, feedback here and then save changes. And now it's updated the score um, up here in um, the grade pill as well. And now I can move on to the next student by just clicking on the next student. And then I would follow the same pathway here. And again, you can um, turn on or turn off the descriptors. Uh, in, a, in an update that's coming, um, Maybe this month, either this month or next month. Um, what, however, this screen looks now. When you change to the next student, uh, that will it will continue to look the same. So um, right now, for example, the rubric is out, and I change students. It closes this um, slide out panel over here. In the future, uh, that's going to actually stay out as you left it. So um, hopefully, that will save a little bit of time and be um, helpful when you're actually grading. So that's what it looks like from the instructor's point of view once it's already set up um, and how you would actually work through kind of your workflow on grading with the rubric. Um, again, you just you select your categories. It automatically adjusts the grade for you. You can leave feedback, save, and then you're set. In this case, I would need to post these. I'm gonna post it because we might wanna look at it from student view. And then if we do that, if we go to student preview, I can then click on the rubric and see the score, and I can see what was selected. So this is the student view. And we're gonna exit. There are a few limitations uh, currently to the rubrics. One is, um, if you have a test or an assignment that has questions, and this includes essay questions, it feels like if there was an essay question, you should be able to attach a rubric to grade it, uh, but currently you cannot. Um, so if there are any questions within the um, test or the assignment that you've created in Blackboard, you cannot attach a rubric. Uh, and that's where some people kind of run into uh, some confusion. So if there are any, it doesn't matter if it's an essay question, multiple choice, true, false. If there's any sort of question that's in there, it will not let you attach a rubric. Um, as I just stated, not currently not available for essay questions. This is a feature that Blackboard is working on and hopefully will be rolled out soon. Another limitation, at least uh, for me, is that once you create the rows and columns, you can't like change the order of them. So if I had like thesis, evidence, analysis, I couldn't switch those around um, without kind of deleting it and adding a new one. Um, there, at the moment, there's not currently a no points rubric. Um, but that is coming. So you could have a rubric that doesn't have a point value or a percentage value attached to it. Um, but at the moment, it's not available. Um, and then when you want to attach, or if you want to attach a rubric to a discussion, which you can do, it has to be marked as a graded discussion. So um, when you put in your discussions, it may appear uh, as an ungraded item first. And if that's the case, it will not let you add a rubric. You have to mark it as graded. Um, or, or will be graded, and then you can attach a rubric. 
So these are some of the limitations and some of the problems, probably the most common problems that people run into uh, when they go to try and use the rubrics. If you try to use it in any of these cases, they won't work. Um, so I guess the first thing then when it, when it actually comes to rubrics is copying a rubric from one course to another. So if you have rubrics created in um, a course you taught last semester or last year or in another course that you're currently teaching, you can pull that same rubric uh, into any of the courses that you're teaching or the shells. Um, and you do that the same way you copy any other material in Blackboard. So you just find a purple plus um, and hover over it, or you can go up here to the three dots across from course content. You click that, then you click um, copy items and you find the course that had um, the rubric. I know there's one here. And then you'll see if it has, if there are rubrics created in that course, there will be a folder that says rubrics. And then you can copy the whole folder or you can go into it and just copy the uh, that desired rubric. <clears throat> And then here I have um, the circle telling me that it's copying content. We'll give it a second, uh, but it probably has already come through. So, um, and then to associate a rubric, you you can create an assignment. In this case, I've already created one. And then you have to go into the settings over here on the right-hand column. So the rubric um, setting does not appear initially. Um, if you just click the settings tab and then you scroll down under additional tools, you can see use grading rubric. You can click here and you can see that I have two rubrics in my course. Um, this is the rubric that I had used in the example I'd already created. And this new rubric 1212 is the one that I had just copied in. So I can add that rubric to this assignment and click save. And now it's here. If I want to um, have a look at it, I can open it here. And now I can see um, the rubric. You can, you can edit the uh, title by clicking on it as well. And you can change um, the rubric to percentage, a percentage range, points or point range. And these are the current options that are available. For, for this class today, we're gonna just use percentage. And so that's how you associate a, a rubric with your course and how you copy a rubric in. If you want to um, remove a rubric, you go into settings, you find the rubric and you have to actually kind of hover over it. Um, and when you do this trash can will appear. So I don't wanna use this rubric anymore. I have to find it. You can see the trash can is not currently there. I have to put my cursor in that kind of in that range there and then I can click the trash can and it will remove the rubric. Any questions on copying a rubric into your course, attaching a rubric to an assignment or deleting a rubric? Okay, perfect. If you have any, please throw them in the chat or feel free to unmute and speak. Um, so the next thing we'll do is we'll create um, an assignment and then we will add a rubric into that assignment. So what we're going to do is um, just hover uh, between two items and find the purple plus. We'll click the purple plus and we're gonna click create. In this case, we're going to just choose an assignment. Um, if I wanted to, I could add um, a description to the assignment here. I could click the purple plus. I can I can add a file. So if I had like a Word doc or a PDF of the assignment, I can upload it here, or I can attach, um, I can click text and I can enter or paste the text into this box here. As I said before, if you put a question of any type in here, you will not be able to um, use the rubric feature. So once you're here, um, and you have your assignment created, you can click the settings wheel again. This slider will pop out 
And then we will scroll down to additional tools, add grading rubric, click that, and then we can click create. Um, and this is, they essentially start you out with four rows and four columns. Um, but uh, now, as I said, I think at the beginning, um, you can really add as many as you would like. Um, I don't know why you would want unlimited rows and columns, but the feature is now available. I know some uh, some courses use um, rubrics that were created um, from elsewhere, and they may have um, they may be large rubrics, and so now you can add as many rows or columns as you would like. To do so, you um, you just hover where you want the column to go. For example, so I have the criteria. Um, if I want to put it first, I can just hover here, and the purple plus will appear. It's essentially on any of these grade lines here. Here, um, I'm going to click plus here, and then it's going to automatically adjust um, the points. So I'm just going to put three in here, uh, and then I'm going to click and add one more. Um, but you can you can name these anything you want. If you want to change um, the language, you can hover over it and click the pencil. Um, or if you want to delete it, you can hover and click the trash can. If you want to change the point, uh, or in this case, the percentage value, um, you can hover in that area there. And this is the same for the description and click the pencil. And now you can make this out of whatever percentage that you would like. And then you can type in your description here. So you can paste, if you have a, already have a paper or, or um, PDF Word doc rubric, and you want to just copy and paste it in, you can type that in here and it will automatically add your descriptors. Um, if you have created goals for your course, you can also attach um, those goals to the rubric as well. So that was adding extra columns. Um, if you want to add extra rows, you go about it the same way. Um, you just hover over the lines like this. Um, and so I'm going to close in 2.5. And then you can adjust the um, the percentage value of the total grade here. So how how if you're looking in percentages, how this works is um, if if we go down the list for the criteria, this is this criteria here is going to be 25% of the grade. And then if we look out this way, um, so if they get 50%, it's essentially 12 and a half percent they'll get attached. So th this percentage uh, going across here is well will provide the total value of the, this percentage that the student receives, if that makes sense. Um, and again, like I said, if you want to add more, you just hover over, click the purple plus, you have to give it a name. And there it is. When you're finished, you can hit save. And then, um, then you need to add the rubric on. So we just created the rubric. Um, we didn't give it a name, but it's new rubric 215. And then if we want to add, we just click add. And if we want to view and edit, we can click view. And then we can go back in and actually clean this up. So we'll view this one. Uh, this was the one that I had created before. Um, uh, since I've already used this rubric uh, to grade another item, it will not let me edit it. Um, but what I can do is create a copy of it. So if, if you have a rubric that you've already used and you decide you want to make some adjustments, you'll have to create a copy um, and then you can copy it there. So I'm just gonna add the rubric here by clicking add and save. And now you'll see that the rubric has appeared. And then again, once the submissions um, come in, you can click submissions, you'll click on the student, you'll hover and click here, and then you'll get that grading view that we saw at the beginning. The other way to um, create a rubric is to um, go to the gradebook. So if we go into the gradebook and we hover here, we can actually go over to the settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then here we can see the rubrics that we have um, in the course. And we can also click create and make a new rubric here. So if you want to, um, just kind of like build a bank of rubrics or just add your rubrics early in the year before you create your assignments. Um, this is an easy way to do it. Uh, again, you're in the gradebook. You go over and find the settings wheel. 
scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then you can create from here. You can duplicate and then edit. Um, so you have like two, two versions or multiple versions um, of a rubric, or use one to build out uh, and kind of expand for another. Um, as I said before, um, rubrics cannot be used for essay questions or tests um, or assignments that have questions embedded. Um, so for example, I have a question embedded here. If I want to add a rubric, I will go over here and click the settings and I scroll down to where I would normally find rubric and you'll see you can't add a rubric uh, to an assessment with questions. Um, like I said, this is probably the most common problem that people run into when they're trying to create these rubrics because it feels like if you have an essay question, you should be able to attach a rubric. But currently you can't. Uh, like I said, that is a feature that should be coming uh, in the next few months. Any questions uh, or concerns on uh, anything that I've covered up until this point? Okay, great. The um, next topic, the other areas that you can use rubrics are journals. Um, and discussions. And so we'll use discussions um, as our example for this. So to add a rubric to a discussion, you, you can create the discussion, open it. Um, and then here you'll see by default, the discussion will show up as discussion isn't graded. Um, and in this case, you cannot attach a rubric. So if we click out here, there's no option to um, attach a rubric. So what we'll need to do is you can either click on the blue discussion isn't graded or the settings and then click grade discussion. Now we'll set the due date and time, the category, how you want the, uh, to grade with points or um, percentage, point value and so on. And now you see uh, under additional tools, we have use grading rubric. So I can add a rubric here. And I'm just gonna add the same one that I've been using. like this and save. Um, and then once there is content in the uh, example here, which I think I accidentally deleted, oh no, here it is. Um, so now that I have the rubric attached here, which again, I had to go into settings, I had to make sure that it said grade discussion. And then I went down to additional tools, grading rubric and attached my rubric. Um, so once I go into the discussion and students have submitted stuff, <clears throat> um, once the student actually goes to post, uh, they can see the rubric. Uh, so they can think about their response uh, as far as areas that they need to cover. Um, but if I want to grade it, I can click on up here where it says grades and participation. And again, I can hover over um, the student. When it grays, I can click. And then I have uh, right here on the grade pill, you can see the little rubric pop out. So if I click that, um, I can now see my rubric. And again, if I wanna see the full description while I'm grading, which I think is, um, has been a tremendous improvement that they've added this, um, I can now just select the scores. And when I click out, uh, it saved the score. And then you can add feedback as well from there. So that is how to add a rubric to a discussion, use the rubric in the discussion as well. Any questions, comments so far? Okay, excellent. And the last thing, and I showed this a second ago, but I will cover it again, is removing a rubric. Um, so if you go into a course and you have a rubric attached, um, I'm sorry, into an assignment and you have a rubric attached, you have to go into the settings. You can't remove it here from this pop-out screen. You have to click the settings wheel, 
scroll down, find the grading rubric, and then again, you have to hover over it because it's hidden, find the trash can and click, and then it will remove that rubric from the assignment. And that is how they are removed. Any questions, comments, uh, any specific cases that you would like to look at, um, feel free to unmute and, and toss those out. And if you don't feel comfortable speaking now or you don't know what to ask or talk about, uh, but you do find problems later while you're working on your course, you can always reach out to us here at CIDL. Um, You can set up a one-to-one. -one. Um, that could be in person or video or phone. Um, you can also submit just a request um, and we can email you back uh, with some resources or some tips or guidance. Um, as I said before, our website has um, many resources on teaching and learning, but also specifically related to Blackboard. Uh, and there are resources in there on the Blackboard rubric. Um, I'll just also make a pitch for our template. CIDL has a template um, to help organize and design, or kind of organize and lay out your um, course in Blackboard. You can request a, a copy only access to that template as well. And then um, as I pointed out at the beginning, we host a number of workshops each month. Uh, that you can sign up for, and I will go back here. Um, on they're kind of organized here by different topics, uh, and you can find the ones that are relevant to uh, what you or where you might need support or are curious of learning new new things. So, um, if you don't have questions, uh, that's what I have to cover. Uh, if there's anything that I didn't cover that you would like me to, um, please let me know. Uh, you can let me know now, or you could email me, and we can go over it. Um, but again, here was my agenda. Uh, I can't do that because that's gone crazy. Um, here, here we go. Here's the agenda. Um, if there's anything in here that you need uh, to go over that you don't think I covered well or that you would like me to repeat, please let me know. Um, happy to let you reclaim your extra 30 minutes though to get on with your day. Uh, and I will stay on here if you have questions or um, need support. Thank you very much for coming. Um, and I will send out an email uh, later today or tomorrow kind of a follow-up email with this video attached so you can reference it uh, later as needed. Thank you.